The Lives of the Saints by Father Alban Butler, December 15th, Blessed Maria Victoria Fornari Strada. Maria Victoria was born in Genoa in the year 1562. When she turned 17, there was talk of her entering the convent, but she disappointed her parents' hopes and married Angelo Strada. The marriage turned out well, and the couple lived happily for nine years. Angelo willingly and gladly joined in his wife's charitable works and ardently defended her from the adverse criticism of people who were surprised that she did not take part in social amusements and activities. They had six children, four boys, and two girls. At the end of those nine years of happiness in 1587, Angelo died, and for a long time, Victoria was unable to console herself and her young children, and thinking that they were abandoned because she felt unable to care for them and educate them properly, she was on the verge of despair. But her pain and uncertainty disappeared as if by enchantment, following an event that Victoria herself later related in writing and in detail on the advice of her confessor. The Virgin Mary appeared to her and said, Victoria, my daughter, be brave and have confidence, because it is my desire to take both mother and children under my protection. I will take care of your home. Live in peace, without worries. The only thing I ask of you is that you trust entirely in me, so that you may thus give yourself to the love of God above all things. Victoria saw immediately with complete clarity what she had to do, and at once all her worries ceased. She took the vow of chastity, lived in retreat, and dedicated all her time to God, to her children, and to the poor in that order. She did not tolerate anything superfluous or that which represented any luxury in her house. She imposed on herself a rule of severe mortifications, and for example, when the church imposed a fast, she practiced it rigorously on bread and water. Once all her children had secured their future, Victoria presented to the archbishop a project she had outlined some time before to create a new order of nuns dedicated in a very special way to Our Lady. The archbishop liked the project, but for some time withheld his approval for lack of sufficient funds to support such a foundation. However, it was not long before one of the prelate's friends offered to finance the matter in part by providing a building for the community. The archbishop then gave his consent and support, and in the year 1604, Victoria and ten other women took the habit, and the following year made their profession. Their object, their object was to honor and adore the Blessed Virgin in the mystery of her Annunciation and her hidden life in Nazareth. At profession, each nun added the name Maria Annunziata to her own and promised obedience to the particularly strict rule of enclosure of the new order. Thanks to the enthusiasm and zeal of Mother Victoria, in 1612, a second house was founded and soon after, the order spread to France, but not before an attempt was made, behind the founder's back, to affiliate that community to another order, under the pretext that the congregation was not strong enough or numerous enough to survive on its own. Mother Victoria learned what was happening and implored the help of the Virgin Mary. In a vision, Our Lady gave her new assurances of her unfailing help and very soon, the danger passed. Mother Victoria continued in the government of her community, encouraged her daughters in penance, and gave them an example of complete humility and deep love until her death, which occurred when she was 55 years old on December 15, 1617. Her feast is celebrated on today's date, which is the date of her first foundation. These nuns are distinguished from the Annunciades of the Annunciation, founded by St. Joan of Valois, by the epithet blue which refers to the color of their cloaks.